Welcome everybody back to the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center here at the Graduate Center CUNY in the City University of New York from Manhattan. Welcome to Siegel Talks. It's an, another uh, week of uh, listening to uh, voices uh, from artists around the world. Yesterday we had an update uh, from uh, Indonesia, a very significant, uh, I thought, inspiring uh, talk of uh, the theater community coming together in that big nation, uh, the fourth largest nation, mm. the greatest Muslim population in the world, and how the arts uh, are working there, um, where is no real government funding for the arts, but over 350 festivals in a year where uh, art and life seems to be intertwined great supportive uh, community. We heard devastating accounts just last week from Brazil uh, where artists mm -hmm. are starving. Uh, there's no help, a hostile government, a right-wing close to fascist government. And um, it's the same troubling news somehow from a bit from a Hungary, a part of Poland, mm -hmm. Romania. And uh, now we switch our focus to a, a country that has a great a tradition of theater, one of the great uh, superpowers, or one would say, though, of theaters in the history of theater. It's uh, Italy uh, that has brought us uh, so much uh, uh, over centuries of um, a significant uh, contribution to the world of theater, reinventing uh, theater and uh, from early comedia groups uh, being the hosts, of course, a lot of Greek theaters that are throughout the south of Italy, also in Sicily. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, uh, the great works of the Pirandellos, the Georgios trailers, and uh, it's impossible to name uh, the Ronconis, all the names and Massini going on now. And we have a very special uh, um, update uh, today from Italy, and it's from uh, Palermo, from Sicily. And uh, we have with us uh, the honorable mayor of the city of Palermo is Leo Luca Orlando. Thank you for, for joining us, the great Pamela Villoresi, a great actor, actress, Hello. Uh, director, and she runs the Teatro Biondi uh, in Sicily. And also with us is uh, Atam Darausha, who is uh, the president of the Cultural Council in Palermo. Palermo, of course, is a city that uh, is as life itself full of contradictions, uh, full of uh, everything that's good is good and things that are not good are not good, but they are close, uh, of course, to the front lines uh, of the um, new development when it comes to refugees, when it comes to uh, immigration and uh, much, much, much closer than everybody else is perhaps in Europe. And, uh, and uh, so we would like to hear what is going on. So uh, uh, Leo Luca, uh, first of all, thank you really for taking the time uh, to talk to us. I know how much you work. You are a legend uh, in Italy for your work, uh, for supporting uh, the arts, but also for your work for refugees to Cui Palermo and Open City. But how is it now in the time of Corona? What's going on in the city of Palermo? Like, uh, could you hear us? Yeah, maybe no. you can come up. So, Pamela, let's go to you right away. Um, okay. Um, what's going yes. on in Palermo? Okay, I have to tell you in the famous war uh, between uh, state and mafia in Palermo, thanks to Leo Luca and many heroes like judges and so on, won the state. So now we can, co we can call Palermo uh, the town of culture. And uh, every mm -hmm. day there is some museums that is open. Uh, and when I arrived to direct the theater, uh, Leo Luca, uh, uh, the mayor, asked me, please destroy the world around the theater and put the theater in all the town in poor areas of the town and so on. And that's what I did. Uh, Leo Luca was the mayor when 30 years ago he invited Pina Bausch for, for her um, show Palermo Palermo. And if you remember at mm -hmm. the beginning of the show, you could see a wall and after two, three minutes, all the world fall down. And so he said, just, just that. And so we really started to bring the theater out 
of the world of the of the whole and and to go in all in all the parts of the town with for all the persons of the town and we started to create a lot of synergy with all the cultural institutions of, of the town not only cultural even for assistants uh, voluntaries and so on and that was i think a little bit my signature of, of my <laughs> of my brief for the moment direction but uh, now we have leo luca he can tell you about the coronavirus period in palermo leo luca okay leo luca can you hear us yes i can hear and i wish just to say thanks for your attention uh, just uh, i wish to say that after a test a sanitary test, lucky, negative. About me, I live in quarantine. And my wife says that she spoke more along with me when I worked outside than now that I work inside in my home. <laughs> because I spend all my time just trying to direct, govern the city, remaining at home. But it means that probably now, I am a new, a new a, a start, a startup. Mm -hmm. I am mayor since 35 years, but I feel like a startup because I think that everything changed. And I wish just to start from freedom from fear. Freedom from fear. Uh, I am really honored because the 14 April of this year, I had to receive by King and Queen of Holland, by the Roosevelt. Uh, uh, foundation, the Freedom from Fear Award. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, it was postponed and I will receive next year this fantastic prize. I am really, um, I say thanks for the attention to me, but attention <laughs> to the city of Palermo because we probably know what does mean to be free from fear. There's only one way to be free from fear, uh, to take care and to prevent. We just fight against the mafia, uh, taking care and preventing. Not only with the repression, not only with law enforcement, but even with the cultural prevention. Because the fight against the mafias is something like a Sicilian card with two wheels. One wheel is the wheel of law enforcement, other wheel is the wheel of the culture. The two wheels have to match the same speed. If the will of repression marches, I remember tolerance zero, uh, marches more fast than the will of culture, the car doesn't go forward, get round. And people would say it was better when it was worse. So we just fighting the mafia, decided not to respect the, the, the law, but to respect the rights. In many cases, the state law are against the human rights. Lucky, our Republican Constitution does protect the human rights. And the, the International Convention protect the human rights. So we are not, we have not been only the city of legality of the law, but we wish to, to be the city of legality of the rights. Mm -hmm. I am really mm -hmm. proud to say that we have no, no foreign, no migrant in Palermo. When somebody asked to me, how many migrants are in Palermo? I reply, no one who lives in Palermo is Palermo. Exactly. And I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry for you. If one day you will come in Palermo, you will be obliged to be Palermo. For my former <laughs> mm -hmm. of yeah, course, just to you repeat, can leave Palermo, yeah. you will, you can just leave Palermo when you wish. Just to and repeat what Leo, uh, Leo Luca said, he said, there are no foreigners, there are no migrants in Palermo. Everybody who is in Palermo is part of the city of Palermo. So this is an incredible statement. We know uh, your legendary action when you went onto a ship full of refugees that was rejected by Italian government. You filled out forms, uh, immigration forms, and said everybody should come in here. Did, uh, did the immigration, the migration, did it revive the city? Was it part of the renaissance of the rebirth of Palermo? All the Palermitans were important, including the so-called migrant. And I, I wish to say that the one year ago, the, the, the former Minister of Interiors, Matteo Salvini, 
when I decide I will not respect the law because I respect the Constitution, he said that just in a press conference, I will send the army to, ar to arrest and to stop Orlando. After one year, <laughs> Salvini is not yet Minister of Interiors, and the army did not arrive. I'm waiting for the army, but they did not arrive. Because mm -hmm. I think that no one can go against the, uh, the protection of human rights. What is uh, really important is that I am not a crazy, probably yes I am. I'm not a crazy isolated mayor. What I feel, what I say is uh, supported, is just uh, sponsored, uh, just by the, the high majority of population. I'm not a philosopher. I'm proud to be uh, honorary uh, doctor in German philosophy in the University of Trier, but I'm a jurist. I'm not a philosopher. I am a politician. I've been with these ideas elected and elected in Palermo. Please stop three minutes and think how different and better is Palermo just in, in comparison with other cities in the world. We applied the same strategy just against the villain, just like the mafia. Prevention and taking care. Prevention and taking care. And uh, I wish to tell you that today, Palermo is the biggest city having less infected, less uh, uh, people who died. You can imagine that the, in the province of Palermo, it, it means 1,300,000 inhabitants, where the totally 34 uh, people who died. 34. Incredible. Mm -hmm. 34. And may I tell you, I have not to say that, in the city of Palermo, there is the city that I govern, we had six, six, uh, because I said and I cried, you have to obey, you have to obey. Then I prayed and prayed, please, please obey, respect the law. And the population followed me. And I think that today we are just like, like, like in the past and better than in the past. We are exciting and safe. We were safe. Just speaking about criminality, we wish to be, to remain safe, speaking about sanitary um, dimension, respect of the, of the of the earth, and uh, I think that uh, I am a startup. So I spent these two months, including the quarantine, of course, at the beginning, to try to counter the, the thousand little and, and enormous emergencies, sanitary emergencies. But uh, since the last four weeks, when I just uh, controlled that uh, the the virus, the virus, they did not expand it in the city of Palermo. I take care of the of the future. Just one hour before, together with Pamela, together with the deputy mayor for cultures, we spoke about the future of the city of Palermo, starting from music and theater, because we are just ready, just to play the role of startup, of course. And I wish only to say some something about the virus. That I is. think that the COVID-19 is a, a natural event, natural tragedy, just like the eruption of the volcano, just like an earthquake, or if you prefer, just like a, a war. A war where responsible is not the earth, the, the earth but responsible are the states of the human beings. Mm -hmm. Well, we have now to counter the largest natural event in the history of humanity, because the volcan erup er eruption is local. The earthquake is local. Even the Second World War was not so expansive like the virus, because we have a, a lot of states not in involved in the Second World War, but involved uh, uh, by the, the virus. It means that our life has to change. It's changing the dimension of the time. The people are living in a different way the time. They are living in a different way just the, the, the right to, to be in good health condition. And I think that any, any artistic plan, any political plan, any economic plan has to start from the respect of the 
of the earth. It is just the starting point. That means mm -hmm. it's back of human rights. Now, I think that Palermo is a, in a, a special uh, uh, position, in, advanced, because for us to respect human rights is domestic life. It's just the life of, 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 of every day. No one will come in Palermo because the cathedral is fantastic. No one will come in Palermo because our museum, our theater are really splendid. Everybody will ask, we will be safe, we will be sanitary safe, and we are just planning the sanitary safety of the city. We are accustomed Fantastic. to get the safety. Fantastic. In the past, it was mm -hmm. the safety coming from security. Today is the safety coming from the spread of the earth. And uh, as I told you, I think we are the only city in the world not having a deputy mayor, the deputy mayor for culture. We have no deputy mayor for culture. We have a deputy mayor for culturists, not for culture, for culturists, respecting the identity of everybody because identity is the supreme right, the supreme human right. Every human being is a cocktail, is a cocktail. A Sicilian identity does not exist because each Sicilian is different. I think that even each American or each German is different. Yeah. Only the fascists, only the fascists pretend to say that we are all with the same identity, not tense. My identity is different from the identity of, of everybody because we feel, we think that we are to be different to be equal, as somebody said, just reaching the coast of the United States. To be different to be equal. We are different because we are human beings. And also, and we, uh, we have the right. Yeah, we have the right to be different. Le, le droit de la différence, as the, the French says. I, so this is an incredible parfait, account. Parfait. Je ne suis pas. Je ne suis pas palermitain. Parce que ma femme, ma mère et mon père étaient palermitain. Je ne suis palermitain parce que j'avais établi cette palermitain. And if we hear, uh, Leo, Leo uh, Luca, if you wait a second, you know, to say this is a sixth term mayor of a town that was not yes. in good shape, a yes. town that now has won as Pamela and others oh. in the fight against mafia, where culture uh, has played an important role. And as we heard from Brazil now, or from Hungary, where government are not working right, they have forms that do not work, they do not serve, and also they are hostile to culture. This is an example where government works, yes. it keeps safe. They are not and in my, in my uh, also keeps culture in it. So maybe we ask Atam, as a, uh, the president uh, of the Cultural Council, how, how does um, uh, theater, theater and performance fit in? What difference does it make in the life of the city of He Palermo? was the president of the Council of uh, Culturists. Now culturists. the mayor for Culturists. Okay. Culturists. So how, does, where, how do you come in? What difference does theater make in the city? Yes, thank you very much, Frank. Thank you very much to everybody. As the mayor, the mayor stated, I was the first president of the City Council for Culture, which was the city council that represents everybody who come, who was born in another country. We don't call it the City Council for Migrants. We call it City Council for Cultures. It was my first political experience. Now I am executive chancellor of uh, culture, the deputy mayor for culture, so I'm in the city gover government. And it's very interesting that uh, someone like me to, today, in these days, in these months, uh, is uh, running the culture sector in Palermo and uh, uh, running the business in this period is very difficult. But you know, Frank, you ask a very interesting question. You said how much uh, did uh, uh, migrants or migration uh, uh, contributed on changing, on creating the renaissance of Palermo. We have a lot of example on that. And every kind of contribution that I can state now, it always linked to the cultural issue. Because culture for us, we have proved in these years that culture is a, a, a very, uh, a very uh, how you say, it, a very important instrument of social inclusion, of putting people together people that they are very different between them. When they meet, they don't have ever, always anything in common. So you can stick people together by culture. And the work that uh, 
Pamela has done with the uh, Beyond the Theater and the work that the Teatro Maximo, our Lyric Opera House, does and the work that all, everybody does. We do a lot of cultural activity that it's uh, addressed to social questions. So it's our way of taking care of things. So when we speak about a crisis like COVID-19 or any other crisis that the city had in these years, you will always see that we handle the situation using culture. You know, you can speak about COVID-19 by health uh, uh, measurement, by health, um, you know, uh, uh, sanitary actions. I'm a general practitioner myself. I'm a doctor, so I, I, I think that I, and I still work as a general practitioner, although I'm deputy mayor of Palermo. For us, culture, it's not only a word. It's not something that you go there on Friday or Saturday and you live uh, one hour, two hours in a theater, on a cinema house. It's not like that. For us, we, we, we decided that culture for us, we decided and we take it uh, on in these years, that culture for us is the base of our action. And we are, we are speaking about secure city. We are speaking about secure city because we speak about a city that take care of everyone. You know, the mayor has spoken about uh, um, uh, this concept, uh, regarding uh, taking care of people. It's very important not to have any invisible areas in the city. It's very important that people are visible, that we can help poor people. We can help people who are coming to our country after you know having a very long journey in Africa and then in the Mediterranean Sea. We can help people that are facing now very, econ very difficult economic action. Making people visible is very important because it's the only way that you can uh, assure that you have a secure city. So being inclusive, being, uh, how you say, tolerance, being uh, culturally involved with the place that you live in is a very important instrument that make your city secure. I handle myself, my, my, myself this situation in my first experiment as a experience as a president of the City Council for Cultures. Uh, dealing with the migrants community. We have a lot of people who didn't really run their usual life, their daily life by the rhythm of the city. And we make it that now they are a part of the city rhythm. It's very important yeah. for a big city to have everyone involved. And I can assure you, there is nothing that make people involved and make people feel together than culture. That's incredible. Normally we hear stories or we see film that people from Sicily went away uh, to the United States, which was a country of openness where things were working, where they had a chance for a better life. And now it seems all of a sudden that things are reversed. Uh, Pamela, um, Adham said, uh, um, we work to make things right. The mayor said, we, this is an open town. This is a healthy town, a safe town. Tell us about your work. How do you take care of things, as Atam said? <laughs> so I have to tell you when I, I was very happy to come in Palermo, because we have really a renaissance, un rinascimento in this moment in the town. And so it, it, it's very touching. And one of the first production I wanted, because you know the duty of a national theater like we are, is uh, to talk about uh, the lands culture, but the lands culture is not only Pirandello from Sicily, is not the culture of the past. For instance, the culture of the moment of the present, for instance, is the culture of 30,000 Indians. They are Palermitani now. <laughs> and uh, from Pakistan to Sri Lanka, but most of them are from our Bengali. So I called a very good uh, dramas writer and uh, she, she spent five months in all the areas uh, where the Bengali lives and so on. And they, she was listening all the story. We were shooting all the interviews and we, all the stories that we created Bengala Palermo. That will be the, the next show. I mean, it, it's a show that had to be, to have the premiere on the 8th of May. And unfortunately we have to postpone on the next spring. But anyway, is one of the next production 
and they are so happy to participate to the life of the town. And I have to tell you one thing. Uh, many Indians, of course, they have different religion, mostly uh, Catholic and uh, Hinduist. They have only one fest, religious fest. They are all together for Santa Rosalia, that is the scent of the town. And you know, there are many persons, they walk up in the mountain to, to be in the cave, to, to go in the cave where is the statue where the scent lived. And uh, so there are thousands of persons, they go, they go up, they call a chianata when you go up. And, uh, yes. and so there are more or less every, every, every September, 1,000, 1,500 Bengalis that go up to do the Akhyanata and the Rosalia is the common point of this, the, the three religions of the Bengalis, you know, it's culture. Incredible. Uh, Mayor, um, first of all, congratulations on uh, putting uh, regulations in place that the COVID didn't spread. Congratulations for uh, six terms where you turned around the city that was a model for what's not working and now having something shining that is working. For you personally, what does art mean? What does theater mean for you as a, as a person? His life. <laughs> I wish only just uh, to say something, just uh, because I think the best way to communicate is not to say words, is to tell stories. The words are all the same, are all perfect, are all, uh, all dead. The stories are all different, are all uh, different. Uh, they are all not perfect. So I can tell you stories, not words. One story is that, uh, Adam Darashwa, uh, take care of the people because uh, he was in this a doctor. And being a doctor you knows doesn't mean to take care of the people. And just speaking about, uh, about uh, Palermo, the candles of Chaluca in Palermo were switched on by Imam, by the mayor, by a Hindu leader, I forgot, by a rabbi too by Rabin too. I mean, just uh, we think that uh, no one can accept that we divide us in the name of God. I believe in God, but please don't ask me the name of God. When I am in a Moshe, I pray for Allah. When I am in a synagogue, I pray for Yahweh. When I am in the Hindu temples, I pray for Shiva. When I am in a, in a Buddhist community, of course, I, I am with Buddha, and the moment, in this moment, when I am in a Christian church, I pray Jesus Christ. No one can divide, in name of God, the man from the other man. It's not a philosophy, it's daily life, it's my life. And I am really proud because I was, it was really a luxury for me. I was able just to do what I feel, and to be elected and re-elected is terrible. I think that is a, a fantastic luck. I can, I can die in five minutes. And I, if I die, I can, I can say I die lucky, mission accomplished. Non completed, not completed. Eh? There is something to do, there's something to do. But accomplished, because I, I did my contribution to the cultural change, the change of the mind of the people. I think is a, a, ter a terrible, a terrible privilege to be part of a community. I am a person, we are a community. That is alternative, I am an individ individual, and we are a closely group. So in Palermo, I'm a person, we are a community. And I think that uh, everybody understand what I wish to say that uh, I am, of course, I'm not against Mr. Salvini. I'm not against Mr. Salvini. I'm not in competition with Mr. Salvini. He plays cricket. I play volley. I play another another sport, another field with other rules. So we are not in competition. It is a completely alternative. So we are alternative to populism because the populism has no respect for the time. 
the populist of things that's possible to change at soon, without respect of the past, without the project of future. Therefore, the populists, they use tweet a slogan, tweet a slogan. We don't use tweet a slogan, we tell stories, because we have respect of the past, and we are sure that without respect of the past, it means respect of the time, it's not possible to build the future. The theater, the theater is giving at this moment in Palermo, and I have to say thanks to Pamela, because we are demonstrating that it's possible to, to have theater without theater. It's possible to have school without school. It's possible to have church without churches. It is the gift of the digital. We have only two things really global, the virus and the digital. We wish to connect. We fight against the, the virus and we wish to use the digital, not to be used by digital. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And this is interesting, uh, what you say. You say uh, theater tells stories and we need to tell stories, not uh, slogans. Um, we need to make people visible and theater is a uh, one way um, to do that. Uh, Pamela, May I say, probably, yeah. the, probably it's exactly the role of theater to tell stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, that is, uh, that is amazing. So Pamela, um, I, I hear you also have during the, the, uh, the times of uh, the Corona, and this is why the great Elizabeth Hayes, who is joining us here and listening in, and will help us out if we can't find the right Italian world, even so she is a speaker of French and English and Italian, but um, thank you Elizabeth for putting us all together. It was her suggestion that we focus on Palermo. She said, this is an extraordinary story and we did so. So um, 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 pa Pamela, um, what do you do during the time of Corona? Your theater that is so deeply rooted in community that plays a vital role in the Renaissance of, of, of Palermo. What do you, do you, did you close or did, what, what are you doing? At the moment. We had to close. They close because in Italy we have in the regions different situations of Corona. In the north, I think we we lost her. Um, no, it just froze for a moment. Just froze for a moment. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure she's talking about Bergamo. And, uh, mm -hmm. Here we go. So here we are. You're back. Yeah, in Bergamo, yeah. where it was a terrible situation. Yeah, the terrible in Milan. Mm -hmm. Terrible. We have not that situation. So we heard that they were closing all the theaters in the north. And so I just contacted some association um, um, companies of video. And so we were ready to shoot uh, uh, live and to go in live streaming uh, with the show. Uh, they closed our theater. We just had the premiere, Leo Luca and Ham were there. And uh, so we announced that we had to close the theater. And for, for three days, uh, we have been acted for live streaming with the cameras and the direct uh, direction, <laughs> live direction. And uh, we had so many uh, spectators in, in all over the Italy, not only in Italy. So the same and production, uh, Pamela, so the production yeah, you stopped, days. the production you stopped, you showed yeah. live every evening. Yeah, for three days with only one spectator. The first one was our mayor. The second day, a famous photographer, uh, Letizia Battaglia, and so on. And we. So acted. one person came in your theater, then it was one filmed, person. They filmed, could, and everybody in, in Palermo, and everybody in yeah, Palermo in that, or who has an internet access could see the show. Of course, for free, for without free. money, for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a fantastic message because the show was about Frida Kahlo. Mm -hmm. And the title is Viva la Vida. No one title was so perfect for the period. And uh, <clears throat> we were telling the story about a woman that was obliged to be closed in her room. Yeah for years because yeah. of the accident of the tram yeah. and because of the 33 uh, chirurgical operations she had. But in that prison, in that block, she started to pain. And so she became immortal. So with this message, we closed the theater and we started to go online in our uh, social, uh, uh, come si dice, come si chiamano? Social, <laughs> social media. Social media. In our social media, 
with the interviews, uh, of course, in uh, with uh, a lot, some shows about our archivio, but also to 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 share the creative process of our uh, productions with students and with all the public. And so we call the directors, the uh, costumes, uh, design, uh, the scenery design, the musicians to talk with the public. For instance, for one production that was a comedy of uh, Latin word, Aulularia of Plauto, uh, we wanted to have third uh, 300 uh, students in in the in the theater to talk with them about the tra the trade that the treatment that you have to do when you translation do the translation from an ancient language to a modern one to to be comic you have to be mm -hmm. to trade of course so which treatment and so on and uh, the surprise was that we had our 300 students from home but so they were had online they were other 5000 students from all over the world 5, and so people. i thought it's fantastic i want mm -hmm. I, I really hope to see our students as soon as possible in our theater but i want i don't want to renounce any more uh, to the other 5000 in all over mm -hmm. the world we have to say uh, the persons of my age, I'm 63, we are a little bit Jurassic <laughs> with the new technologies. Mm -hmm. And um, most of uh, theater's artists, uh, they are Jurassic. So this over, was an opportunity yeah, to so shake over 5, a little people, bit yeah. our mentality and to open uh, our mentality to, to, to the digital. And so we are organizing a lot of work on digital, not really the show, because of course, theater is one person that talks about human stories to other persons. So this is the theater. But all the way, all the process we do to arrive to the premiere like a birth can be like a pregnancy uh, uh, shared with, with all the public, mm -hmm. with the students and, and not yeah, only. Great. With the so you students. prepare and dramaturgically, also, you show the process. But do you also yeah. do daily programming now? Uh, or yeah, of course, of course. What do you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, quite every day. Yeah. And uh, no, every day, what every do you day, show? What do you day. show? Uh, yes, I explained some some shows we had in the archivios, uh, a lot of interviews, and there are a lot of actors. They gave us uh, some uh, reading about classical poems, uh, Divina Commedia, a lot of things, even for little children, and uh, especially for the students. They are studying at home is very difficult you know yeah. but if you have an actor that reads for you the poems or divina or dante or leopardi everyone shakespeare it is more easy i think so, so you commission to... artists uh, theater artists to program uh, to yeah. tape something and, and you show it live at 6 30 p.m or something and especially with our young actors, our students of our school, so even they could get some money because we have a, a very, uh, a very good, um, uh, how do you say, uh, government health uh, uh, for workers and uh, financial, uh, no, financial, uh, financial help from government uh, assistance. Okay. But uh, for freelance, uh, there are only 800 euros per month and not for everybody, especially for young <coughs> artists. Uh, so we could pay them and we involve them to create something for digital, but from theater actors, that was yeah. very interesting. A great that idea. Was very yeah. interesting. Yesterday we heard from Indonesia, from the Paper Moon, the company, they um, actually, they asked people Pay us, pay ten dollars, three people, and then they create a story based on suggestions from audiences, or they send uh, little boxes to make a puppet for people at home, students. People make the puppet at home, and they create stories. So the, it's the, another way around. So there are many ways, and your way is a fantastic way to reach out. Um, Adham, what do you want artists to do? 
you are the, uh, the president and next to the mayor, but for you, what do you need from artists at the moment? What do you want them to contribute? What is of essence? Uh, it's not an easy question, you know. You ask the mayor, what about, uh, what do you think about art and culture? And I told you that it, it is his life. Mm -hmm. I am involved for uh, this, this period that we have a lot of discussion with a lot of artists who live and work in Palermo. There are a lot of them that have, have, have chosen Palermo to live in here. They've come from other cities from Italy and uh, we have a direct and a frank uh, discussion about the situation. Uh, it's not easy to say, what do you want from them? It's what I want for them. I would really want that our government and the European Union and in any other country, being an artist, it's a state of mind. We accept that, but it's a job too. And they should be helped to be able to produce their cultural activities without being worried every day and every month on how to pay the rent. I, I, am, I'm, I think I really am a dreamer. I think I, I dream about a, a, a way of uh, like, 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 like a substitution that the state just pay the artist to do their part in our society because I think that artists, singer, cultural operators are very important to our society like doctors, lawyers and any other else. It's not easy to understand the life of uh, artists in Italy and in Europe. Uh, usually, as Pamela said, a lot of them, the freelance, they don't have a fixed income and it's very difficult for them. So this is what I really, we, we ask the government to try to help them more because being an artist, it's not only a state of mind, it's a situation that you have to run on your, your, uh, your, uh, your life. We try in Palermo to be, be we, 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 to be very near them and to help them in uh, passing this period that it's not an easy period. Frank speak, spoken about artists in Brazil and in Indonesia and other countries that they are dealing with very difficult questions. What I really dream about uh, art and culture in general is to make you understand what I really think. I think that here in Palermo, we don't have migrants, but I think I, I'm, it's a free sentence. I know it's a very crazy idea, but we don't have artists too, because art and culture are, belong to everyone. And uh, uh, when I meet with Pamela and when I go to the theater, she make you feel a, pa a part of the theater. When you go to small theaters in Palermo, when you go to uh, Teatro del Balato, Spazio Franco, you go there, you are not an artist. You are not a cultural operator. You, it's not your job, but you feel a part of this place. When you go to the Massimo Theater, to the uh, Lyric, uh, Opera Lyrica House, you feel a part. This way of making people feel belong to these places, it's the only way to give much more strength to cultural activity and to the whole sector of art and, and cultures. Because if the whole population feel that the art is very important for, for us, they will do anything to defend it. It's the same thing that we as doctors live in this space in Italy, because as doctors, we didn't have a lot of uh, easy period uh, working in a country like Italy. It's not, it's not an easy job to be a general practitioner or a surgeon or whatever. But in this crisis, a lot of people understood that we are saving the country. We are saving the health of people. And I want you to understand that I think that artists and cultural activity will save our society. That's why I will do everything to try to give them the whole uh, support that they need, and they need a lot of it. May I? What? Yes, May please. I? Go ahead. What Adam said is not the present, the future, it's even the past. In 1987, uh, Pina Bausch, coming from Wuppertal, became Palermitan, felt the soul of the city, shared our life, and she produced the Palermo, Palermo. It was in 19, uh, 1987. It means the, 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 the wall fell down two years before the, the wall fell down in Berlin. It was a prophecy, a prophecy. 
It was a Palermitan prophecy that was just produced by a German, a German artist that I love it. I will never stop to cry remembering my loved Pina. I wish just to say that the past, the future and the present try to live together. Therefore, there is not only a mayor, a deputy mayor for cartridges. There is a, a deputy mayor, there is a lady, for school and job. School and job. Just to send the message that we have to go to promote the school outside the classes. And to, to promote the job inside the classes. I mean, this, this is a cultural change. Another deputy mayor, another deputy mayor is, uh, is very old, is 26 years old. <laughs> 26 years old is very, very old. It means that uh, when I started to be mayor, he was not born, he was not born. And so he you know what I did, just speaking with the father and the mother because he did not know what I did when I was mayor. Now he's deputy mayor, he take care of young people and innovation. Young people and innovation. Incredible. Incredible also for us who I work in... It is what we call cultural change. Mm -hmm. For us, it is normal. No one protested when a Palermitan born in, in Nazareth, because Adam was born in, in Nazareth, uh, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, he and another person was, <laughs> were born in Nazareth, not only he come from us, uh, even Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, no, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the family, not came not not, you know, we have the I hospital. Family, the, family, the family came from Nazareth. Yeah, from but they have Nazareth. problem in the hospital in Nazareth, so they, they went to Bethlehem. <laughs> Hello. And Let us discuss about Jesus Christ speaking <laughs> with Adam that is Muslim, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, I yeah. want, I, if I can, I, sure. I, I want to tell you that what we have really understood, I hope, in this situation of COVID is that uh, we are safe together because we are part of a greater whole. And uh, that was uh, what I really wanted to do with the, the Beyond the Theater, to create synergy with all institutions of the town. For instance, the most one, the most important is with the university. Uh, we have a lot of students now that are uh, in our, in our um, internship in our theater. For instance, for molecular biology, biology, they have a restoration uh, course and they are doing some pictures. They are black from uh, a big fire of 30 years ago. We have students of Beaux-Arts, Le Belle Arti, they are designing the scenery and for us and so on and so on. But now, uh, we have just signed <laughs> the convention two days ago. Uh, our school theater will be the first university diploma of Italy. And uh, from October, we will start in October and we are first very happy the students uh, in, in the sense? morning. I mean, there are many theater universities. First diploma no. for... No. Frank, no, the... the a little you bit safe. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. just there. there is a, the a remarkable theater school connected to the Teatro Biondo, mm -hmm. and they study. But now, as of this new agreement, which thanks to Pamela's initiative, they will receive a university. It will be a university level diploma because mm -hmm. you don't have arts universities in Italy. So it's the first time that the theater course will mm -hmm. be recognized on a university level diploma. It's extraordinary. Extraordinary. And you also put they together will have theaters. The double diploma. Eh? And you also put together theaters in Sicily, right? To try to create yes. a, a union. Is uh, it also, ha does that, it happen in Corona time? Uh, yes, uh, during this period. No, we started before, many months before, to call the other theatres, the other town, to create uh, the association of Sicilian theatre, because there are many regions like Tuscany and so on, they have a, a circuit, uh, an association of the theatres. 
And uh, that can be a very good job for Sicily because you don't pass through the Sicily. You have to come from the, the other parts of Italy and it's a very expensive. So if you invite a production from Milan, for instance, if you have to pay a lot of airplanes and uh, mm -hmm. the track for Sicily, and so on can be very good if you have a, a, an association of theater now you can divide uh, all this money and so on but also because a lot of theaters of little town they are closed for many years so if we create an association now is the moment to to reinforce <laughs> the base because especially in the autumn we don't know if we can have some uh, um, invitations, some invite productions, so guest productions, uh, the mobility, we don't know what it will be in the autumn, special for our production to go out. So maybe it's a, it's a good moment to reinforce our situation. And we are quite uh, ready to sign the document. We are Incredible. just 50 theaters yeah. for the moment in a time Maybe. when theaters at one one second but in a time when theaters are closing down in the u.s the richest country of the world when it looks like everything is in danger there's a town in italy where you think of reopening theaters during corona time um, that theaters that have been closed for decades we have a mayor who has been moved by his theater piece of a dance a choreographer that was important for a vision for his city so it's a foundational myth almost um, to have theater, if we always think, what does theater really do? And then I guess you can look at Palermo and say, this made, made the mayor or the future mayor, or he was already mayor, think. Um, uh, May um, I say that for us, the lockdown was not, uh, that we had not a lockdown. We had the pregnancies. <laughs> no, we are ready. But, uh, Leo Luca, uh, all of this, uh, what uh, uh, Pamela <laughs> is doing now, what Atam is doing now, they are walking in your dream of a city. They are part of the dream, dream workers who walk in what you dreamt up. Inside you, what voice was it that told you I should become a politician? I should change the city and I want to have art as part of it. Where does that come from? And I have just to, to tell stories, <laughs> not only to say words. Everything for me started the 6th January 1980. In 6th January 1980, the president of Sicilian region, it means the governor of Sicily, was killed by politicians and by mafios. He was by named politicians. Yes, I'd say. Uh, he was killed and the name was Pier Santi Mattarella, the president of the Sicilian region. By the body of the killer, the president were two persons, the brother of Pier Santi, Sergio the, Mattarella, a professor of the university. The brother is our president the, the, now. The brother yes. of the killer, the president, professor of the university, my colleague, who were in the same department. He was teaching parliamentary law, I was teaching constitutional law. And uh, I was the legal advisor of Piersanti, the killer, the president of the Sicilian region. And the Piersanti was assistant university of my father, because my father was the decan of the faculty of law in the city of University of Palermo. And uh, he was a young lawyer in the law office of my father. When I went from the second floor to the first floor of the palace of my family, just to greet my, my, my father, I met every time the young Pier Santi Mattarella. When he started to be involved in politicians, he stopped to be lawyer, giving me a terrible positive lesson. You cannot be lawyer and be involved in politics. Otherwise, you will be in conflict of interest. And I followed the example of Pier Santi. When I started to be involved in politics, I was a rich lawyer a rich lawyer, but I decided to be a poor mayor. Because I think that if you are free, you can defend the freedom of everybody. In by the body of the killer, the president, I was obliged to be involved in politics. The brother, Sergio, and the widow, Irma, told me, you cannot accept that Piersanti will be will die a second time. <clears throat> you are young. You are not 30 years old. 
you don't know the politician, you have never met the politician of Bukhilo de Piersanti, you are pretty crazy. I occupied the faculty of law where my father was the dean. Then I went to live two years in Germany we occupied the faculty of law where the dean was not my father, so no problem in family in Germany. And uh, I could not say no. And I candidate in the first election. Sergio Mattarella, at the time professor in the university, candidate the city council member to vote for me as mayor, because at that time the mayors were elected inside the by the city council members. And I, I started to show my experience. So when Sergio Mattarella was elected president of the Italian Republic, is our president of the Italian Republic, I called him and said, Sergio, mission accomplished. You are the president of the Italian Republic and the mayor of Palermo and the mafia doesn't govern any longer the city of Palermo. So you can understand why I cannot have compromise with the mafiosi because I, it should be against my life against the sense of my life. Therefore, I say, if I will die in five minutes, I will, I will die lucky and saying mission accomplished. Not completely accomplished. Now I'm sorry, but I have to leave because at seven o'clock, I have an appointment because I have to fight against uh, some friend of mine, the minister of the Italian government. I have to fight against them in name of my party. In the, my party is Palermo, and the name of, of Palermo, I fight against everybody. But I am <laughs> really happy. I am, I am really happy because uh, I convinced. I say to all the 30, 90 mayors in Sicily, I am the president of 30, 390 mayors in Sicily, including Catania, Tormina, Montreal, and Cefalu, and uh, they all accepted my vision. Every, we have the same party. And the party for the mayor as the name of the city they govern. So we are always together in the name of our city. And I don't take care, in this case, I don't take care of what say, uh, what say this party or the other party. So in five minutes, I will fight against my friend who are the national government in the name of my party, in the name of my city. Uh, thanks for your attention, sorry, but I really, really, really have to leave it. Yeah, no, thank you so, so much for, um, for joining us and for sharing this. Congratulations on your work. What a great example. And every, anybody who questions what good government can do, how government can change, look at the city of Palermo, look at your work, and also how you integrate the arts. It's a role model. And where art flourishes, where art is the center stage, it's a good sign for the city, for the community. It's an indicator that things are going the right way and that uh, Adnan said, yeah, it's a good way of um, taking care of things. Before you go, and maybe then I ask everybody, what do you feel, uh, uh, Leoluca, what do we have to focus? What do you say to our listeners or to young artists? What should we think about? What is important to keep in mind in this time of Corona? I think that uh, what is important for an artist is to be free from fear, to be free from fear. It means not to imagine what the people who wait, they do, but do what they feel to do. I think it's, from, it's really, the real artist has to be free. When the, the, the artist is not free, is no artist. And the, I think that we are building new humanism. So I hope that the artists will be all crazy, all crazy, all crazy. I hope that the, 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 the artists will be all crazy. So that I hope that all the mayors will be crazy, of course, in the sense I said before. And the, just speaking about the new humanismus, I just uh, was watching my iPhone because uh, I received the really human information. My granddaughter, 18 years old, the daughter of my daughter, lives in, in Groningen, in Holland. Mm -hmm. she, she's 18 years Seaside. old. 18, 18 years old. She was just in a school of art. The school of art was closed. And she remained in quarantine. She is in quarantine in Groningen since three months. Now, she told me that it was accepted at the University of Paris. So she, she will go not in Palermo, but in Paris. But she will, will be Palermitan even in, in Paris, I'm sure. 
So thanks a lot. Thank you. And congratulations. Bye -bye. Thank you. Atam, what Bye -bye. do you think? Thank you. Thank you. It's a great Bye -bye. honor to have you with us. And really, all our respect to you and your life's Thanks. work and uh, what so a see, see you in Palermo, see you in Palermo. Yes, I will come. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting and safe, exciting okay. and safe, don't forget. Okay. And even not expensive, even not expensive. Okay, <laughs> yes, we, will, we will be there. It's a great city and a, an important <coughs> city to support. Atnam, what do you think artists think talk about or what do you say to young artists, but in general to our listeners in this time, what do you focus about? Well, we are, we are exciting and safe, and we are a lot sunny. We are sunny like California, and even more. Uh, <laughs> no, what I really want to say to all artists, mainly young ones who are facing this period, is to be hopeful, because you have to be free from fear, but you have to have hope, because it's only hope with hope that you can build uh, new ideas and uh, new visions. You can be mad. You can be crazy but if you don't have hope in you you can't go anywhere so to be hopeful because we have already demonstrated in these years and these decades and centuries that the history of humankind is always evolving and going ahead so just it's it's a new way of dealing with things it's a new way of seeing things and living things and uh, as i always said art has been always the key that uh, permit us to see things differently. And I think that artists are showing us and will show us how to cope with this period in a different way. And I'm a good observer of their activities. And I have to say that since my politician role is to deal with them, and as the mayor said, they are, he wants them even more crazy. And uh, dealing with a lot of crazy people makes you very happy because it makes me feel like in my family and I'm very in this, uh, in this context, it's very important to understand that when things are changing, it's not the end of the world, it's a new world. Hmm. That's a big thing. Elizabeth, since you have been such a, a faithful uh, uh, listener also to, uh, to our um, series, and you have been hmm. such a great worker in the field of uh, cultural diplomacy, um, from your experience, how do you go through this and what do you feel is of significance uh, in this time you know, we live in? I I did want to say that I expected to remain in the background, but I can't yeah, yeah. resist because all of these extraordinary things that we've been hearing today, they are true. I'm a little bit on the inside and on the outside because I'm very honored to be a teammate mm -hmm. with Pamela and be consulting on some international projects. And I was absolutely stunned having lived and worked in other cities in the world, primarily Paris, that there's this incredible feeling of, of humanism, of acceptance. I really, when I'm in Palermo, I don't see the seams between one neighborhood and another or one community and another. And if anything, Pamela was a little bit modest and underestimated some of the things that the theater is doing. So as for the future, First of all, I think there's a degree of flexibility in the way they are working at Teatro Biondo and the city of Palermo, thanks to the mayor and thanks to the deputy mayor for culture, where uh, the, it really is a question of adapting and not leaning on the past, but using this very difficult, challenging period to be an opportunity. And I'm very excited to see what will what will come. But but the courage and the energy and the solidarity that I have already witnessed in Palermo, and I certainly know that I will see when I return, is this this says I think a great deal. And I've been listening to many of your Siegel talks, and the contrast between one country and another is, as you pointed out, is is very very pronounced. Our dream is to go deep in our identity, in our past, in our culture, but just to grow up and to meet all the world, even in theater, we are connecting with many uh, situations in all the Europe, all the world, thanks to Elizabeth, that is our <laughs> coll uh, collaboration. She accepted to be to collaborate with us. And so with Wuppertal, with Pina Bausch Foundation, with uh, Cartoucherie, uh, Ariane Mnuchkin in Paris, with Eugenio Barba uh, in uh, Denmark, uh, and so on. So we are creating something very interesting. <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> No, that is uh, that is uh, sensational, and really, um, thank you for this update. That is unexpected, 
we also don't really uh, read about uh, in the news or we don't hear about it, uh, if at all, or Sicily often in the, is in the headlines, you know, for refugee crisis and the and ability of Europe of handling such things. This is a great, great model. And again, uh, it's impressive how governments and the arts work together. In a way, also what makes New York City great, that mayors have such a great respect. Bloomberg, of course, was a, a mayor that uh, put also the culture in the city. He understood that it's no longer the city of manufacturing, no longer the city just of Wall Street alone. It's also a lifestyle city and you need something to glue it all together. Uh, Tony Kushner said New York is the melting pot that never really melted and we have real problems there and perhaps Palermo is finding a way to melt and to combine and to do some alchemy uh, to create a, a, a gold uh, out of uh, all these uh, ingredients that are there and I certainly will also go to see that but it was moving to hear how significant it is for a mayor to have the arts that he goes to theater openings that Pina Bausch's work was so foundational to his vision and, um, and that you really are um, um, inventing something new that you imagine a city where uh, someone from India or from Pakistan is part of the vision and that is not a, a threat, but um, as something to, to reinvent uh, as the uh, um, Edouard Glisson, the great thinker who no longer with us, but who was also at the Grad Center said, so many of problems are just failures of imagination because we fail to imagination of to imagine a possible world and theater helps us. And of course you and Palermo, you're imagining a different world and it seems to be working just by simple looking at COVID cases and seeing that uh, um, and the government is making contribution to make that city better. And here in the US as around the world, it might not be the mafia and the cliches of the Italian ones, but there are people out there who only take advantage of others who kill for their own advantages and they have to be fought as much as Leo Luca did over six uh, terms and over over decades it took courage and everybody has to go out we all need to be part of the change we see you know with the same energy and dedication so really thank you for joining us and uh, Pamela thank and you Atman. Frank thank you, you. thank you Elizabeth yeah. thank you Adam <laughs> yeah and tomorrow we will have a, 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 a Monty Python would say now to something completely different the great Richard Foreman uh, the great uh, oh. director of uh, avant-garde theater in the world uh, who um, also uh, created completely new forms who said it's impossible to uh, express with words what we really see, um, that we have to find different ways, new forms to understand reality, to transcend it. And he is a, a great master who now works mostly with film or video from his home. Um, he will join us. Uh, significant, also inspiring and great Thomas Oberender from Berlin, who runs the Berlin Festspiele, a significant uh, uh, undertaking. Not only he overlooks the Martin Kropius Museum, with his immersion festival. Um, he overlooks the Berlin uh, Theater Treff and the Berlin Film Festival, the Jazz Festival and others. And he's a great writer on the cultural and the artistic uh, um, and developments in Europe, has his ear very close to the earth. And I can't wait to hear from him how he experienced this time, but also what he sees, what new forms uh, will be developing. And he uh, always is looking for them um, even before a Corona time, but it will be great to hear what's on his mind. And Philip Howe will come with Jordana, a uh, great New York playwright, um, and to hear an update from the theater scene in New York and the reflections on how it is an experience. We are still the epicenter at the moment in the world um, of uh, the coronavirus with so, so many, uh, death people and we don't know, can it really be opened? What will happen if we go the German mm -hmm. way or other ways, uh, we, we, how will fatalities be? It's the healthcare is a catastrophic, uh, uh, it, the problems that were existing are wide, wide open. And, um, and in Latin America, as we are learning, it's only starting and New York is so connected to every place in the, in, on the planet. So. Um, it is really uncertain what will come, but as uh, Atan out said, uh, uh, let's not be afraid of the uncertainty of the future. This is a chance we can um, reinvent it. Um, so um, I thank you all for listening. This was an inspiring and also significant talk. And it does show you know, why theater and why the arts is important. We don't always feel we have to justify ourselves, but a session like today makes it clear um, how significant it is and that Working societies, working cities, working communities see it as a given to have a cultural presence as the great 
playwright Goethe said, the German one, you know, you have a house, you want to have nice colors, you want to have nice paintings and furniture. Do you really need it? You don't. Um, if you have a partner in life, you want someone who is attractive, who, uh, who you feel close to. And the same is with cities and countries. You have to have uh, art and you have to have um, culture and you have to have a livable situation. You have forms that work and old forms that do not work. We have to get rid of and we all have to be part of creating new ones. So thank you all for listening. Thanks for HowlRound to um, you, host us, uh, Thea and Vijay. Uh, and Travis and the Siegel team, uh, Andy and San Yang, and I uh, hope you will tune in tomorrow for Richard Foreman. And uh, thank you all, and Lilibus, especially, of course, for putting this together. Pamela, all the best for your work. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you, you, Frank, to your Thank you. Too. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, Frank.